What's going on guys? So this is our ls1rx8.com swap kit. This is the full swap kit that we have right here. And I'm gonna go over each and every part so that you can understand what exactly the parts do and why you need them. First off, we're gonna go with the engine mounts, which it's pretty obvious that you're gonna to have to mount your engine to the car. So first off is we have these frame plates that we had designed and these bolt to the subframe. So this is actually backward. It's put in an organized fashion. So how this goes is this is a left-hand side and this mounts to a factory engine mount stud and then the front is bolted to an existing hole in the subframe. But the subframe doesn't have any support inside of it so what we have is a crush sleeve. So this crush sleeve you drill a three-quarter inch hole through the top section of the subframe and you drop this inside of the subframe. Once you have that into the subframe, you then, are, it's going to be practically like this, and you're going to use the 4-inch bolt that we have and bolt it down to the subframe. Next up, in order to mount the engine in that location, you have to move the rack and pinion. The rack and pinion is going to hit the oil pan way before the engine is even close to being mounted. So what we have are these rack and pinion brackets. These rack and pinion brackets relocate the original location of the rack and pinion and we drop it down. I'm not sure how far this is. It appears to be somewhere around two inches. So now that we've dropped the rack and pinion down, this really messes up all the geometry of the suspension. So what we have to do is use what's called a bump steer kit on the rack and pinion. Well, to the knuckle, to be able to also lower the position of the tie rod angle to help adjust for us lowering the rack and pinion. Otherwise, your car will really drive really bad, very uncontrollable whenever you're hitting bumps. You hit a bump and it'll start steering one direction or another, and it makes it very unpleasant to drive. It's not a fun car at all to drive when you do not have the bump steer kit on at all. And also, the sway bar is in the way. So what we did is we made these sway bar spaces, sway bar spacers. So this bolts directly to your original location and your original bracket and bar with the, your factory bushings and everything get bolted to the new sway bar spot. Or, and we use these bolts and you can use your, all your factory stuff for that. And if you are using a manual, we have this clutch spacer, and what this clutch spacer is, let me go grab. Um... So if you have a manual, this is the Tilton master cylinder that we use. We sell it on our site for y'all. And this is the master cylinder. So there are two ways that you can mount this in, but in order to make it to where you do not have to uh, cut this shaft because it's a little too long, I made a, a spacer to where this slides straight onto it and then you no longer have to cut the slave cylinder and it makes things so much easier. And if it's already a manual, you can use this particular adapter piece on the master cylinder kit and run uh, this hose right here straight to your brake master cylinder and that's where you'll be able to use the fluid. If you have an automatic car, however, you will need ha to have a reservoir because the, re the automatic reservoirs did not have a clutch line hookup spot. Although the nipple's on it, it's not big enough to put a hose on it. So that is where we have for the clutch, and also I'm gonna get the clutch lines. So oh, I don't have the other clutch line that we offer, but one of them is this gold fitting right here. So if you have a gold fitting on your slave cylinder or the one you're getting, this is the clutch line that you'll need. Otherwise, you will likely need the black fitting. If, if you're unsure and you, and, and you just don't really know for sure, send us a picture of your clutch slave cylinder and then we'll be able to make sure that you get the right one. So now we've gone over all the clutch stuff. Also, now that you got your engine in and the, the rack and pinion relocated, the sway bar is done, and the bump steer kit done, now you still don't have a rack and pinion that functions because the electric power steering isn't gonna turn on unless the engine computer sees RPM. 
So what we did is we machined the trigger wheel into from the Mazda into the LS balancer. It doesn't matter the orientation of the balancer when you install it because you're not utilizing it for fire or injector. So it doesn't have to be specific. All it is for is reading the engine RPM and that will get it to where your tack works. And what we did is we made us a, a, an adapter to be able to screw your factory Mazda crank sensor in and then it will read the back of the balancer. So you utilize your factory engine computer and you utilize the factory crank sensor. All you are is cutting the harness and lengthening that particular wire to where you need it. So you don't have to rewire a whole lot for this. It's the two wires for your crank sensor and then also two wires for your coolant sensor. So the coolant sensor screws into the passenger rear of the head. There's an Allen plug you can pull out. The factory sensor screws right into it. And then you get your coolant temperature as well straight to your instrument cluster. Another thing is, is we made this AC bracket. So this bracket is so that you can utilize your factory AC compressor to the LS engine. So this part right here, it's actually upside down. Um, actually, it goes this way. So this bottom side is where you thread your top holes of the compressor with an M10 by 1.5. And that's the thread pitch you're going to tap your AC compressor. And then these bolts go straight to the factory spot for the AC compressor on the top of your engine. You'll see there's a little hump, and this is where that little hump slides into. And this bolts up to the motor, and then this bolts up to the compressor. We do not have a tensioner for this, so if you want to loosen the belt, you'll just loosen these two top bolts, and the bracket will be able to rotate enough to be able to move your AC compressor. Another thing is, is your fuel system. So the fuel, the fuel pump on the factory car, I have never been able to make that work adequately with the factory pump. So what we have is an upgraded pump, which is a 340 liter per hour pump that you can replace your factory pump with. This will support up to around 500 wheel horsepower. After that, it, is, it, it won't work at all. I, I made 512 with my twin turbo car to the tire and this pump had no more at all after that and I do not think the 500 wheel horsepower with that would be safe at all. That's why if you want to go more than that I have another fuel hat that I'll, I can show you. Uh, if you need to go with more power we made this dual pump hat. You can also get it to where you only have one. So the one will be good for about 750 crank horsepower and both of them will be able to do around 1200 to the tire with the 85. So what we have is we have two feed lines and one return line. These are two 6AN lines. I've had a lot of people say that they wanted bigger, one, bigger lines. I don't see the point of it at all. The reason is, is you cannot outflow the nipple of the, the fuel pump. So why make it bigger anymore anywhere else? So how we do this is we do two 6AN feeds. You can do this one of two ways. I would recommend doing it the first way, and that is we go two 6AN lines off to a, nine, to a T, or more like a Y, and then we go to an 8AN all the way up to the back of the fuel rail, and then a 6AN return to our uh, return hose. I haven't had any issues with this with my twin turbo car at all and this fits right into the factory fuel tank. I don't want to say it's exactly super simple to install it. It is a very large unit, but you can install it without removing the tank, although it is quite difficult. But I mean, it doesn't take more than about 25, 30 minutes to be able to slide this in the tank. It's just trying to find the orientation to where you can get it in. These are the lines that will go to your factory uh, fuel level sensor so that your factory fuel level sensor will work. And then this hose right here is where you will snip your original uh, saddle tank fuel hose to this, and this will be picking up the fuel from the passenger side of the car. And you will have to wire this in to some relays. I, I don't have uh, a relay kit for this, but these are for both fuel pumps, so you have the power for each pump and the ground for each pump. 
and you'll be able to power these however you deem necessary. I ran both of mine all the time. And then these two wires right here, which are the significantly smaller ones, will be able to run your uh, fuel level sensor. It doesn't matter the orientation at all. It is just an ohms reading. And that goes over the full fuel system. So next up is your transmission cross member. So this transmission cross member is pretty universal because you have to drill holes through the side of the frame rail in order to mount your transmission up. There's not really anywhere to go straight to it to be able to bolt up. So this can bolt up for most all transmissions. We use a three bolt uh, pattern right here. And the reason is, is because I can then make plates that'll go off of this and pretty much go to any transmission needed. So if we don't have a part already made for your car, we can definitely make that for you if it's necessary. The two exhaust holes are to be able to run your exhaust through. And let's see, oh, I didn't go over this. So this is the steering extension. And this is so that you do not have to cut your steering rod up to be able to install it. So what you do is you're going to line this flat, this, this slight slit up, to the middle of your flat on your steering rod and you're going to insert it and you're going to have to hold the steering rod still because you're going to have to tap this on it's not very simple per se and you're going to want to butt it up all the way up to the steel uh, rod right here in order to fit it all the way in and then this will go straight to your steering knuckle that your uh, your knuckle that goes to the rack so this goes steering rod to your knuckle, and that will make up the distance in order to use your rack and pinion relocation brackets. Next up is the differential mounting. So this differential mounting, I do not recommend running more than 400 wheel horsepower with this differential mounting. Um, there's several reasons why I never tried to go over that, and that is because the gear ratio for that differential is very problematic. It, it does not make much sense to be able to put more than 400 wheel horsepower to it anyway because it's going to slow your car down you're going to be in overdrive I, I mean i ran a 1080 uh, at 127 miles per hour with the factory differential through an automatic and it made it but i was in overdrive before i even got through the traps which is very problematic i it, the car would have gone faster had i had better gearing i was launching in second gear and it just it works, but the gear ratios just aren't there to be able to utilize anything more than 400 wheel horsepower, in my opinion, unless maybe if you have a rotary and you have a lot more RPM than an LS does, which we don't need RPM because we have displacement. However, if you need to go more than 400 wheel horsepower, I recommend going to the 88. So this is our 88 mounting kit. Uh, this is a machine differential cover that we offer so that you can easily bolt it into the car without having to have a lot of issues trying to get this in here. This is machined. Our, our CNC machine that we use to do this takes 20 minutes in the machine shop to be able to machine all these fins off and where they need to go. It's not a task I would recommend doing with a grinder, although I did before he started machining them because I had to figure out where I needed to go, and that was an absolute nightmare. We don't really make any money on this. This is really just a service to help y'all be able to install it much easier. And with these differential mounting options, the plates are the same price regardless of which one you go with. So, but as far as the power goes, I haven't had any issues with the 8.8 at all. I have gone up to a thousand wheel horsepower and it's definitely a solid setup whenever you get these. I don't have the axles in, but the axles are made by Drive Shaft Shop, and they, uh, they really do a very good job. Those axles are not very cheap, but they are a very good quality unit. You, they are really ready to go. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to source any parts. They're just a direct plug and play, and you just got to be able to uh, do the work. This is what, that's, that's what I've made this kit for, is the person who doesn't want to have to be searching for parts. They want to be able to get a kit, install it, and then be ready to go. So that's what all of these parts were for and made for is for the simple of installing them and the ease of being able to remove them. So that kind of gets it up for all the parts that we make other than these are our headers that we make. These are 178 inch long tubes with three inch V bands.